Hello and welcome back to my studio. In this video I'm sharing five of my top painting tips for a loose or impressionist style of painting. Try out any of these tips for an immediate impact to your painting. Alright, let's get into these five tips and go through them one by one. Number one is embrace bold brushwork. Loose and expressive brushwork is the cornerstone of a lively and loose impressionist style. Bold brushwork is so important. If you are caught up in painting small shapes with a small brush, you're probably feeling quite frustrated. You're going to have to try different sized brushes. A bigger brush and also a better technique. Holding the brush and moving the entire arm gets a more expressive brush stroke. Don't tap away just using your fingertips holding the brush. Be bold, be more expressive in your painting gesture and you'll see the brush marks get more energetic. There'll be a few happy accidents as well. Overall, you'll be painting more like an impressionist. If you want to see what type of brushes I suggest, I've got some links to videos that I've done on that topic. You'll find that in the description below. Number two is get to know your color wheel and use color deliberately. Figure out things like warm and cool color and complementary color. Analogous colors also help you get a more relaxed, harmonious color scheme. It's all about color, isn't it? Color gets all the credit, but values do all the work. So don't forget that as well. But as far as color, I do suggest that you get to know your color wheel. A good place to start is get yourself one of these. These are really very useful. They've got two sides to it and uh, you can rotate the color wheel as well to see different color combinations. There's a link to one of these in the description below. They're quite inexpensive, but definitely worth it. Now using warm and cool color or complementary colors, or analogous colors you'll get to see that on the color wheel and then try it out just practice it don't worry about doing a whole completed painting just see what these colors look like on your canvas mix them up try them out and you'll learn so much from that simple exercise number three is use impasto techniques applying thick paint getting paint texture Using a brush or a knife or any other device that comes to hand will be a great start. Impasto techniques are probably my favorite, but they're not easy if you're not familiar with them. Once you've tried them often enough, it becomes part of your painting. I'm always looking for ways to bring in thicker paint strokes. It's those final few bravura strokes of impasto that make an immediate an amazing change to your painting. Now I've done videos on impasto techniques. Once again, there is one in the description and you can find out a bit more about that technique. So you can use brushes, painting knives, you can use other tools as well, like an old credit card and put on a few impasto strokes. It's always appreciated by the viewer. So try them out. Number four is See the light and atmosphere and try and capture that in your colors on your painting. It's the cornerstone of Impressionist painting. Light and atmosphere is everything for an Impressionist. So get to know the light in your landscape. Even if you're painting from a photograph, ask yourself what is the light? Is it warm? Is it cool? What direction is it coming from? Is it an overcast day? Is it bright light? Sunrise? Sunset? Each of those is going to impact the nature of the light. Maybe it's misty or fog or something like that. Try to capture that atmosphere. Be aware of what the light is doing and adapt your painting. You'll find your color wheel will come in handy as well because if you want warm or bright light, you'll see some color combinations you can try out for that. As long as you're aware of it, you'll think of solutions to that painting problem in front of you. And finally, we get to plein air painting, the style made famous by the Impressionists. 
Outdoor painting or painting on plein air is very important. It may seem daunting and difficult. You may not want to paint in front of a crowd of people on the beach. You can start with simple steps like even painting looking out a window. Looking out your window to the outdoors could be a first step for you to actually interpret real life situations, the actual light and what's happening to that light. You can work in your backyard, you can work on your patio. If you're in a block of flats, maybe there's a patio you can go out and just see what is happening with the sunlight. Pick out a few objects and paint that. You could set up a still life on your patio with a pot plant. Paint that. That is a great start. Outdoor painting also teaches you about composition. Very important. You're trying to control that vast uh, vista in front of you. So you're going to have to pick out a composition. A photograph does that for you, sometimes incorrectly. Now you've got to figure it out and now you're thinking about composition and you're picking your subject consciously. All right, that's going to help your painting tremendously. So try out a little bit of plein air painting and see how you take to that. It may be opening up something entirely different and exciting for you. Now if you want to learn a bit more about atmospherics and painting atmosphere, there's also a link to a video uh, in the description. So check that out as well. And there's also plenty more for you. I've got five free painting courses and tutorials that you can start straight away. Find the link up here or also in the description. Pick any of them and they are yours. You have permanent access. All right, so there's no shortage of things to try out. I'm always looking for ways to help you paint more often. That's the idea. All right, well, if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. There's more coming soon. Well, enjoy your painting. And until next time, cheers for now. Mm -hmm.